Committee Member Esty? Okay. Committee Member Whipple? Yes. Chair Savano? Committee Member Lyman? Okay, um, James Colonna. Okay, congratulations. Now raise your right hand and then repeat after me. I. I. Good morning. James O'Rourke. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, to, and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully, and I will well and faithfully Discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. Discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. You going to take a seat? All right. Well, I'll just I'll just do a quick report on it. Most of you are probably familiar, but it's been almost a year, I think, since we've talked about it. So, just for purposes of refreshment. Um, <clears throat> okay, so as you know, the this committee meets here at City Hall on an annual basis, no later than two months following the prior fiscal year audit being accepted by the City Council. And so, for 16-17, um, just last night, the City Council accepted the audit something called um, a CAF or a Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. If you don't know, it's the first time in Katadi that we've done that. And um, I told Norm we couldn't talk about it tonight because <laughs> we would never go home. Um, but it's, it's a very impressive document. It contributed to this massive council packet we had last night, which the council loved. Um, so anyway, so they received it last night, so we're um, immediately following on the heels of that. And then the duties of the committee as outlined in the City Council resolution um, are that the Measure G um, Advisory Committee will review um, the revenue and expenses for Measure G, review the audit of the independent auditor, which um, there's, there's a summary statement in the Measure G report from the independent auditor that summarizes the Measure G expenses and revenues. Provide the council with a written report and um, again, there's a template, which we'll talk about later, that's in the back that you can use as the basis for that. And then also provide direction, any direction to staff on um, the issues of community education, on fiscal issues and outreach pursuant to the oversight committee duties. And then um, just a reminder that these are open meetings subject to the Brown Act and we broadcast these meetings on the web and they're um, archived there as well. And just for reference, the, the resolution of formation for the Oversight Committee is attached to the staff report as well as the um, open, this guide to the Brown Act, open and public version four, although I believe the clerk um, distributed the version five, which just came out hot off the presses. I did, version five should be on your side. Yeah, they're almost sold out when it came out, but, it, <laughs> yeah. but we managed to get, a, get copies for you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So don't leave it around. Take it home. <laughs> All right. So that's um, that's it. Unless there's any questions, this is way of background. Right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. So um, every year the city council does strategic planning and um, for
for for sixteen seventeen for fiscal year sixteen seventeen the the primary goals um, <clears throat> are laid out in the packet so it has the the goals and objectives laid out and that's the comprehensive goals and objectives and it's followed by uh, where we ended up with each department in terms of um, ongoing duties and projects that were the focus for for fiscal year 16 17 and also um, I will say that in the discussions with the council during strategic planning there was a real focus on um, <clears throat> on two things one was economic development and the other was um, public information and communication and so with um, respect to economic development there was a um, a continuing goal to identify key markets, emerging markets, um, review um, uh, zoning and all sorts of kind of nuanced in a variety of things that I um, get on the rabbit hole on. But, you know, a lot of the things related to our zoning, sort of tax change, you know, tax structure and fee structure, um, removing barriers to key development sites and um, Revenue diversification, because as you as you might know, we, a lot of a lot of Katati's revenue is derived from sales tax, and so um, some you know some key outflows from from that. Although it flowed into you know this current fiscal year is you know with the um, with the cannabis business tax that you're all aware of, which is a local tax. It's a it's a revenue diversification measure. Um, there's also um, with respect to lodging, transit occupancy tax. So again, that's just another way to, um, it's, been a, it's been a high priority of the council to broaden the, um, the base of revenue. Because if it's all, if you're so heavily dependent on sales tax, it's great wealth, the economy is doing well, but it drops um, precipitously when the economy is not doing so well. And so it's hard to manage and, and provide all the ongoing services you need to do, you know, the public safety services, the paving streets, maintaining parks, and so forth. So, um, so broadening, so broadening that that base of revenue just provides more stability. Um, so that's that's fundamentally what what they were focused on. And with respect to the uh, the individual departments, I will just say that. Some of the, um, um, and I'll just go quickly through a couple departments. In, like I mentioned, there's a lot of different things in here that are day-to-day -day duties that take up um, a significant amount of time, and then we have you know some amount of capacity for for um, new projects. And with respect to the police department, um, the the focus really has been on enhancing traffic and pedestrian safety, as well as um, community outreach. And um, you've probably all seen that in, in a variety of ways, both Coffee with a Cop, which we're doing pretty regularly now, and also, um, you know, the traffic officer assignment, which um, we turned on after Measure G, but it's an ongoing program. We just started doing a, um, a bicycle cop, although I think you mostly see them in the summertime. It's too cold in the winter to go out on a bicycle, I guess. But um, um, there's also the parent project, which we're running here. Um, I think even maybe tonight, yeah, right. Which is a, it's a project to help uh, families that have uh, children that are um, having issues and trying to help them solve those issues. Is, yeah, yeah, right. As well as like um, National Night Out. And there, you know, so there's a variety of different things that are police specific, but also all of our other events they're attending. Um, and we've had a real focus on uh, sort of neighbor, you know, more neighborhood patrols, um, some new traffic measures, you know, uh, crosswalks and lighted um, stop signs and things like that. So, and radar feedback signs. So you're seeing these things pop up around town. Those are all part of the focus in the police department. And then um, with uh, public works. It was really focusing on some of our big grant projects, getting those done, which um, are the Old Railroad Highway projects were the primarily, or primary big grant projects. That's Old Railroad Highway here at the Gateway, um, down to the park, and then through Old Downtown, the new paving there. Um, the Cater Field sidewalk, so some accessibility projects. And um, that included 
um, new sidewalk from the plaza by the plaza park and up to Olaf Street on, on West Katati as well as um, the, the uh, design piece of what just got built out here on Cater, completing that sidewalk gap. And um, And then finally, I would say that um, th there's a variety of pa just general pavement work going on that the nature of these public works projects is they tend to go from one year to the, they, they kind of blend between years often, just the, the way construction seasons and design cycles go. But those are all, um, those are all ongoing. And then um, with, with community development, it was really focusing on some of these economic um, development initiatives including, um, you know, one of the things I got that got done in 1617, which was, which was a big deal, was um, our fee deferral program. So when development builds, um, typically how it works is they have to pay impact fees. And these are the fees to mitigate the impacts of the development. And they're one-time fees that they pay at the time of development. And typically those are, those are paid when um, like a, a developer would pull a building permit and the fee deferral program is just a, it's a program that allows them to, um, to pay that fee once the project, once the structure, say like a house, is built, but before it's sold to a, to a, um, a buyer. So it defers that fee. So the fee's still collected, the city still gets that money um, when the impacts actually occur, which is when the building gets used. But um, it helps, it really helps financially to um, get, you know, get things going. And so like the village walk development on East Katati at Lancaster um, took advantage of that impact fee program. And I expect some others will too. Um, but it really helps the financing work and gets those housings, housing units built. So um, community development also was um, heavily involved in the, um, you know, the props, the post prop 64 cannabis. Um, discussions and having those public workshops and getting, you know, community feedback on, on what, you know, what the community wants. And that resulted in um, a ballot measure, which I think you all know went to voters here in Katati in November for the cannabis business tax. And then um, admin services, um, they've been, uh, they've been busy with, um, if you've seen, our budget that was adopted for this for 1718, but we did it in 1617. It was a it was a huge improvement over prior budgets and it, budgets in terms of um, the narratives and helping describe what is in the budget and what it all means, and um, really with the with the end goal of making it um, just more transparent and hopefully more accessible to people. That I mean, most people don't deal with municipal finance or, you know, municipal budgets. And so they look at it and it's Greek to them and it's not that, it's dense and not that accessible. So it's continuing this process of, of making, trying to make them more accessible and make them more understandable. And you don't have to be an accountant, you know, to understand them. And, um, and the same would go for the CAFR that I mentioned earlier. It's, um, it provides a lot more information than just the general financial audit does. And it, it, um, it wraps, so you, we have our, even though this blends in the 1718, this CAFR project that uh, Norm's working on, it was for the 1617 finances. And up until now, we've always done a, um, a, a basic financial audit, which is the requirement for any government to do on all of its funds. And that's fine, but you really need to be an accountant to understand what it all means, because it's not that, you know, it's not that clear if, if you don't really know what you're looking at. I mean, who the hell knows what, you know, net position means and, you know, all the other stuff. So um, the CAFR takes that, that basic financial um, audit and wraps it in 10 years of statistical information as well as a bunch of narrative that, um, that describes what it is that you're looking at and hopefully um, points out what's important. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there, a lot of financial information, most of which is really not that, um, not that relevant to the city's overall financial condition. You know, a lot of it's just sort of, 
you know, minor funds that don't really have any significant effect on anything, but they take up space in the, in the financial audit. So it's really trying to focus people's attention and understanding on the things that matter and hopefully make it more understandable. So that's something that, um, that Norm's been working on. That's the Cliff Notes version for you. I'll spare you all his longer discussion. It's not that interesting. <laughs> it's, ex it's extremely interesting, but, but um, anyway. So that's, you, you know, that's, um, that's, where the, that's where we're going, you know, in 16, 17 is really economic development, um, uh, public information in, the, in terms of the, you know, Norm's department, it was the budget and uh, the CAFR, but also um, continuing the utility newsletter um, uh, mailers that have, you know, every two months you see what's going on, what's the main things going on. And we also, um, I think um, you probably know, started up a Facebook account in 16, 17, as well as Nextdoor, and we're continuing to do Nixel. So um, we're really trying to get you know, factual information, good information out um, so that people have access to that if they're interested. And um, I will also say, although this hasn't actually gone live yet, we've been um, through 16, 17, and it's come into 17, 18 a little bit, we've been working on our updated city website to take something that's fairly antiquated and not really, not really that mobile friendly and make it um, much more modern and mobile friendly. So. I expect that um, by the end of this calendar year or in January at the latest, that will, that'll go live. Um, so again, just to provide all this information. And, um, and uh, that's, I, that's really kind of it in a nutshell, but you know, that's what the council wanted us to work on and that's what we were focused on in 16, 17. So, um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer that on what the council's goals were. Okay, great. So, Sure, yeah, if, if there's, it sounds like there's no um, questions on strategic planning, so we can just, yeah, we could, um, if the chair wishes, we could move to the next item, Measure G report. Yeah. Okay, so um, just real briefly, the um, Measure G report is attached, and um, the highlights of it are that um, we received in Measure G revenue, we received about 2.1 million dollars in total revenue, and the um, this is on um, packet page eight. There's a there's a graphic that shows um, how by program how the how the revenue was split. So 36% went to the streets, sidewalk, and storm drain program, which we can talk about in more detail if we want. 35% um, went to the public safety program, 6% to rec um, program, which is now up and running. Um, park and landscape program, 12%, and um, the public building program was 11%. And in, in the um, report, there's a summary of what happened, um, the details in each one of those programs, as well as a map, um, as requested when it was last year um, by the Oversight Committee of where these projects were. And then um, on page, packet page 107 through 19, um, again, that's just the ongoing uh, kind of running list of things that have happened since the inception of uh, Measure G. And then um, back on packet page 111, 
it breaks it down not by program but by operations and maintenance versus capital. So operations and maintenance was about 60 percent, capital was about 40 percent. Um, this is inception to today. And then the state takes a small administrative fee, a little bit over a half a percent. And um, finally, I'll just point out that this packet page 115 is the independent auditor statement of the revenues received and expenditures. And um, rather than give you the um, the 200 page CAFR, this is which which call you know goes over the entire city finances. This is the part that's relevant. Um, so to make it simple, <laughs> related to Measure G. And um, I already spoke about the projects when we talked about strategic planning, but I'd happy, be happy to go into any more detail on anything that's in here. So. Right, it's, it was mostly the gateway and then downtown paving um, in terms of capital, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. I yeah. just wanted to make sure that I was. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other one was with the uh, solid waste, uh, solid waste contract uh, that was done at Kelly Street Station at the time. So um, this is presented to the city uh, I'm sorry, the solid waste? Yeah, which, which? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so that's, that's a day-to-day a -day duty of the city manager's office. And um, so this city, all, all the cities in the county and the city of Katati is no different, franchises their solid waste service. And currently, um, as you know, it's Redwood Empire Disposal. Actually, at the meeting last night, the, um, the council consented to the assignment of that franchise from Redwood Empire Disposal to a company called Recology that's taking over um, Redwood Empire Disposal's assets in Sonoma County. Um, last night. So what's yeah. this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. So what this, um, the effect of FTE, that's government speak. So FTE is full-time equivalent positions, so like bodies. Oh, okay. So the, the percent there next to it, the 0 0.01 is 0 0.01, basically percent, you know, part of a person. Yeah, yeah. No, so it, um, if, if uh, you, re 
well, so the first time, the first year we did the Measure G report, the building official, um, that they were hired shortly after Measure G because we used to have a contract, part-time building official. Um, they were in the public safety category and um, they just got moved to this category last year. And um, it's, it's just a, I guess, a question of categorization. But the expense is the same as it was before. It was, um, so the building official was intended to, you know, for, for public safety, it was intended for public safety because the building official doesn't inspect public buildings. So maybe it's a bit of a miscategorization, but um, the building official was out inspecting private buildings for building safety. And that's, that's the role of the building official. Correct. Yeah. 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 I mean, if it, we, we can we can switch it back to that category um, next year if that's the will of the committee. But. Yeah, so I mean, that would be absolutely no problem to bolster the language there to, to really describe what they're doing. So, but I also this, think yeah. Combine, you mean combine the building? Um. No, no, no. Part of the landscape with uh, recreation. 
Oh. Right. So for categorization, you're going to be combining the two as one. Okay, which so it's the parks and recreation portion of the tag. Uh huh. And then you can break it out under that parks and recreation as well for recreation sport. But that still can be changed. Otherwise, it's more than 18. <laughs> there are more than 18 per thing. So. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're in. It, it's kind of a. Yeah, it, it's the way that the budget is, you know, segregated, but it's artificial in real life. It's all kind of the same thing. Um, so I understand the point. Okay. So combining the, the parks and rec categories and um, and then with the building official, just maybe adding more detail there or combining that with the safety. it was presented on the first year of the metro two is that the building yeah. inspe yeah. inspector was actually combined with public safety. Mm -hmm. It was only in the second year that we uh, moved this category into separate categories. I but agree with you in terms of the categories. It's the competitiveness of the rankings that you have. Yeah. Of the, because looking at this, Yeah, that'd be, I mean, we absolutely could add that language there to make it clear what that is and what it's for. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's coming up this Friday, as you probably know. So it's going to be even bigger this year. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. Well, it used to be done at 730. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. 